Hello guys and we are now on the episode 11 of this series already and so far we only have three topics remaining so we have the statement of cash flows and the disclosures for NPOs and lastly we have the other information that you need to know about NPOs so before we go and start this video to those who are new to my channel and to this topic not for profit accounting please see the previous episodes their links are on the description below. And if you're finished with those, then let's get started. Let's have the cash flow statement. First, you need to know that the NPOs follow the same principles and computations with the profit organizations. If we are talking about cash flow statement, Although, there are a few things that are unique to NPOs. But before we go to that, let's have a little review on the preparation of cash flow statement. So, here is an example of a cash flow statement. So, this statement is composed of three sections. We have the operating activity section, we have the investing activity section, and the financing activity section. So, in the operating activities, you can see here inflows and outflows of cash related to the normal course of operations of an organization. So we have examples here like for inflows, we have payments received from customers, whether it is paid in advance or not. And in the outflows, we have here payment for permits, payment for rent, payment for salaries, supplies, and payment for utilities. So, anything cash-related and related, of course, to the operations will belong in this section. And I am assuming that you already know that. So, let's go now to the next section. We have the investing activities section. So, generally, you can find here two things. First, those cash-related to non-current assets. Like, for example, buying of equipment or land or building to be used by the organization. So, if you buy those then that is an outflow in this section. But if you sell those, like if you sell your old equipment because you wanted to buy a new one, then the cash proceeds will become part of the cash inflows in this investing activities section. Second thing that will belong here is when the organization decides to invest in opportunities. But such investments are not really done by the organization in the normal course of business. Like for example, investing in stocks of other corporations or in bonds of other corporations or in Bitcoin, for example. So cash related to these investments will also be recorded here. And lastly, we have the financing activity section, which includes cash transactions related to financing the company itself. I mean, the company cannot start or expand without getting funds, right? So, the company financing are normally of two classes. First, is that the company can get funding from its owners by getting their investment money. That is why we have here investment from owners. But for corporations, this investment from owners is called proceeds from selling the shares of the corporation. Second, is that the organization can get financing from financial institutions like banks and others. So if you get money from owners and financial institutions, that will be recorded here as inflows. But if you need to pay them back, that's outflows here. And now, all of this or the summary of these sections will now then be added to the cash beginning balance. Then you will get the cash ending balance. So that's the cash flow statement both for profit organizations and NPOs, they're going to follow that, okay? But remember also that cash flows from operating activities can be prepared using a format like this one. So this is what do we call the direct method. But we can also prepare the cash flow from operating activities using indirect method. So this method starts with the net income and you need to add this and also this and you need to deduct this and this. But I will not detail this indirect method in this video. 
I will discuss preparation of cash flow statement in a separate series of videos including the concepts on why are these added or deducted. For now, let me just emphasize again that NPO follows the same concepts and computations with the profit organizations. But before we end this, there are two things that are unique to NPOs that you need to remember. So what are those? Number one, cash donation without restrictions by the donor are considered as inflows from operations of the NPO. And number two, cash donation with donor restrictions, whether temporary or permanent, are recorded as inflow from financing activities of the NPOs. So that's it. Now let's go to the disclosures of the NPO after this. So we are through with this. So let's go to the NPO disclosures. So the same with the cash flow statement, NPOs follow the same principles with the content for disclosures. But there are additional disclosures unique for not-for-profit organizations, which will be discussed later. So to give you a little review on those, so disclosures normally include the following. So the mnemonic is BASO. So B is for background information of the organization, like for example, mayor's permit details or any other registration certificate details or information that will prove the legal existence of the company and others like the date of incorporation or place of business and the like. So that's B. And A is for the accounting standards and accounting policies. So as to the accounting standards, an organization should disclose the standards that it is following, like is the organization following IAS or IFRS or SFAS or other standards, right? So as to accounting policies, the company should also disclose its policies like how do they measure their inventories? Is it FIFO or first in first out or weighted average or any acceptable measurement? So that's the examples of the accounting standards and accounting policies that must be disclosed. Next is we have S, which stands for the specific breakdown of accounts or composition of accounts. Like this example, we have, for example, the cash and cash equivalents of 3,524,625. So this is composed of the following. We have petty cash 4,625 and the remaining 3,520,000 is the cash in bank. So that's the example of this one. And actually, this cash in bank here can still be broken down to balance per bank account because normally an organization has multiple bank accounts, possibly in different banks. So that's it. And lastly, we have other disclosures. So there are a lot of examples for this one, but let's just have one example for simplicity of discussion. So actually, the organization must disclose if the organization is a parent of a lot of subsidiaries, or if the company is just a subsidiary of a certain parent, or just a branch of a certain home office. So again, this is only one of the examples. There are a lot more. So that's it for the BASO, which is normally the contents of the disclosures for both the profit and not-for-profit organizations. But how about the disclosures unique to NPOs? Let's talk about that later. Now, the unique disclosures of the NPO has a mnemonic RUE or RU. R is for the restricted and unrestricted net assets balance. The NPO should present this in its disclosures, but only if such balances were not disclosed in the financial statements of the company, like if it is not found on the statement of financial position or statement of activities. So let me repeat that. So the restricted and unrestricted net assets balance should be disclosed, but only if such balances were not found on the statement of financial position or statement of activities. 
Okay? So, U is for underwater endowment. What is this? It can be easily explained using a sample situation. So, let's have that. So, we have here, Baby G donated 100,000 shares that he owns to an NPO. But such shares cannot be sold so that the proceeds will be used by the NPO. Or in simple terms, the donation is permanently restricted. So, this is a permanently restricted endowment. And again, it cannot be sold and the proceeds cannot be used by the NPO. But here, there are additional information, which is one, only the dividends can be used by the NPO. In addition to that, the shares has a fair value of 10 per share when it was donated. But right now, it has a value of only 5 per share. So if you analyze the donated shares is 100,000 times 10 equals 1 million when it was donated. But now, since the value dropped to 5 a share, the value of the shares is now only 500,000. So now you can say that this endowment or donation is now underwater. So get it? That's the meaning of underwater. So there's a loss of value of 500,000. That loss of value should be disclosed by the NPO to explain the decrease in the value of the donation. And lastly, E is for expenses by function. So, this should be disclosed by the NPO. But there are conditions. The first condition is the expenses by function can only be disclosed by the NPO if the NPO chose to classify expenses by function. So, you need to remember that NPOs in general are not required to classify expenses by function. They are just encouraged. Or, the NPO is classified as a voluntary health and welfare organization because voluntary health and welfare organizations needs to classify their expenses by function. But there is another requirement aside from those mentioned, and that is the expenses classified by function shall only be disclosed if such expenses are not yet classified by function in the financial statements of the NPO. Like for example, in the statement of activities, the expenses are only classified by nature or there, are, there is no separate statement of functional expenses. If that's the case, then the expenses shall be classified by function here in the disclosures if the NPO again um, chose to classify the expenses not just by nature but also by function or if the NPO is a voluntary health and welfare organization. So that's it for the cash flow statement and disclosures of the NPO. And let's talk about this, the other differences or other information that you need to know about NPOs in the next episode to keep this video short. And if you've learned, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated on my next videos. And thank you for watching.